Hi everybody, I'm Jennifer Gorski, and I'm a math support teacher here in the Pocono Mountain School District. And today, what we're gonna be talking about is how to get your primary child ready for kindergarten math. So, let's talk about this. I want to show you a few things that I picked up from my local dollar store. Because when we're teaching our child and getting them ready with some math skills, it's important to keep things simple but it's also really important to keep things very cost effective. So going to my dollar store, I picked up some of these things. First, dice. Dice are great and they're very essential. We use them in a lot of games and I'm gonna show you how to use them with certain skills in counting. Then I picked up some of these kind of circle gear like um, objects to count. We could make patterns, we could sort. I also picked up, you could never go wrong with flashcards. And a bingo marker, but I'll wait for that till the end. Okay, so first of all, let's start talking about the beginning. It's really important to first establish a little schedule. Because when you're dealing with a primary child, they're very young. They could only take in so much information at one time. So to establish a schedule, that means you're gonna establish a consistency. You are going to make sure that you're repeating those skills in order for them to retain it. So first things first, I just like to count and count simply. If your child is not a good counter yet, they really need some skills with that, they need to build on that, start simply. Start counting from one to five. Then you could gradually start expanding from one to 10. So I'm gonna try and keep our goal at a 10 by the end of the summer, okay? So when you count with your child, maybe you could establish that schedule like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, there's going to be our counting days. And the cool thing is you don't need any kind of materials. You could be simply anywhere and you could count. So when you count, it's important to stay at a nice, slow, consistent pace. So this is how I would count with them. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pretty simple, right? And if that's what you need to do for several days, several weeks, don't think this is something that's going to be happening and children are going to master overnight. It doesn't happen that way. But once they get to a certain point with their rote counting, then we could start incorporating objects and other things in order for them to make the connection from the counting to the object. So let's take some of those objects that I got from the dollar store and show you how we can start using them to help your kindergarten child count. All right, so I'll be back with a different view. Okay, and we're back. So now what we're going to be doing, we are going to be talking about how am I gonna use these objects to count. So if you're asking your child to count these objects, that means you are asking them to physically touch them and associate a number for each of them. However, you can't believe that children are able to do that right off the bat. They can't. So what we do here in kindergarten, we do a strategy called count and move. So I'm encouraging the child to actually physically touch each one and move it and count a number as they do it. So watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so remember, if your child's not ready to go to 10, you could just put five objects out and they could count to five. 
here. I'm still using that goal of 10, so that's why I had 10 objects. But notice how I kept, kept that slow, consistent pace, and I touched each object and associated a number with it. Okay, so that's a really important strategy. I would reinforce that very consistently in my counting. Now, let's take these objects again. And remember, I could do other things with these. They're perfect for counting, but they're also perfect for sorting. And sorting is a great skill that we use here in kindergarten too. Sorting is the ability to ask a child to put them into groups of likeness. How are they alike? So the only opportunity that I could use this to sort is through color. So it's also a good opportunity that we could do color identification with this too. So how would I approach this? I would say we're gonna sort, but I want them to find all the red circles. So then find those red ones. Find the yellow circles. Find the black circles. Find the green circles. And then find the purple circles. So not only did we count them, but we also sorted them. And we also did some color identifying there too. So that's also very essential. Now, let's take this one step further. Let's think about one other very essential skill that we have here in kindergarten, which is patterning. So we counted these objects, we sorted them. Now, let's make a pattern out of them. I'm only gonna to touch on one kind of pattern today. It's our most simple pattern. When we make patterns in kindergarten, we identify them through letters. So we name them by letter formations. So for example, the simplest pattern we have here in kindergarten is called an A, B pattern. So when we do this, we're gonna do it by color. A is one color, B will be another. I will only need two colors in that particular pattern. Patterns will repeat. And when we start patterns in kindergarten, they're basically going to be doing them strictly by colored objects. So obviously, I'm not going to need every circle here. I'm only going to need certain colored circles. So what I want to establish is what colors am I going to need for my A? What colors am I going to need for my B? So I'm going to have to reach over into my other little section to gather those. So maybe my A's, I might want to keep them yellow. Maybe my B's, I might keep green. So that means these other objects, these other colors, I am not going to need. I'm going to need the rest of my green and my yellow. So when we start, let's do it like this. A, B, A, B. See how it's repeating? A, B, A, B. So this is our most simple pattern that we have here in kindergarten, an AB pattern. Could I establish it with other colors? Maybe could I have red and black? Absolutely. Could I have orange and purple? Absolutely. They could just focus on the simplicity of an AB pattern in this case. So the cool thing is about just using this one type of object, I counted, I sorted, and I created a pattern out of those objects. So hold tight. I'm going to show you something new. Okay, and we're back. So now take a look. I got the dice back now. So the cool thing about dice is 
I could use one dice, I could use two dice. My suggestion though would just be using one dice at a time. So all I would do is I would roll the dice and I would ask them to count the number of dots that I rolled. Easy, right? Absolutely. So when I rolled, I'd be like, what is that number? You count. They should count one. Is it a possibility if your child is ready? Can they also not only count, but write the number? Sure. See, the beauty of this is it all depends on the level of your child that you could take these skills a little bit further or scale them back a bit. So let's roll it again. What did we get this time? One, two. Now, the cool thing about this is once they get really good at counting these specific groups of dots on a dice, we could do something called subitizing. Subitizing is a skill that we look at and when we test children in the district, we focus on subitizing as a big portion of our testing in the year. So when we subitize, that means you are going to be looking at a group of objects, or in this case, dots on a dice, could be even dots on a domino, and they are able to look and see at the arrangement and determine what is the number. So for example, if I were to roll, they wouldn't necessarily have to count, they could just say four because they know that arrangement. It's four. Now, what happens if your child is not there yet? That's where I'm talking about the consistency. Keeping that consistency going and repeating these different skills on certain days, that will make the retention stick. That will make it work. So maybe, hey, your child might be able to handle two dice. You can roll two dice and have them count. That's fine too. It all depends on what your child is then able to do. But that's just another tip and trick that you could use with dice. Another one maybe we could do with dice too, before we switch it up, is you can roll two dice and we can compare. So we could say, which number has more? So maybe they might need the opportunity to count four versus three. Who has more? Four. So there's a lot of different things that you could be doing with this. And the skills, no matter what, are very essential. So hold tight, I'm gonna show you a little something else. Okay, so remember those flashcards. The beauty about flashcards is flashcards can be taken on a travel trip. You know, you could take them anywhere. You could give them to anybody. They are able to, they're used for basic recall here, okay? So what I have here, I'm pretending that this is like my little table here and I have an assortment of number flashcards. So what can we do here if you're looking at these flashcards? Well, I would do one of two things. First things first, as you can see, I only have the numbers through five here, because again, we're keeping it simple. So first thing I would do is I would have them, if they're able to identify each number. So I'd be like, tell me this number, what's this one? And then I would just continue on until they were able to identify each one. Now, what happens if they can't do all these five numbers? If you might have to work on one number a week, two numbers, that's fine. But like I said, keep it simple and don't overwhelm. So. I would go through, I would identify each one. Then if you want to take it a step further, maybe I then now want to take these and arrange them by how you would count them. 
So we're not only identifying, but then we're going back to that counting again, making those connections. So I'd be like, where do we start? What number do we start on? Where do we begin? Well, we're only hoping they're going to point to one. I'd be like, then where do we go? One, and then two, three, four, and then five. So basically, we're using these as an opportunity to identify and to count. So that's the great thing about flashcards. Now, the other flashcards that I have here, too, are basic counting flashcards. Um, it's just a, a card that has, they have to count the numbers and they go up to 20. So uh, this is a good one that can last a good portion of the year. Also, I have colors and shapes because shapes is also a big portion of kindergarten as well. So let me think here. We want to finish up, right? I want to show you something else cool. Remember when I was talking about that bingo marker? It's also fun to do fun things with the kids. So working on something that's going to be a little bit more artistic and it helps like with grip and motor skills. Hold tight. I'm going to show you what you can do. And we're back. So now, what are we going to possibly do with this? Well, what I decided to do was take a look at those flashcards again. I want to use this bingo marker. And what I'm going to ask the child to do is make a number of dots that's going to match the number. So, for example, they would have to identify what is this number? Two. And then they would take the marker and they would make two dots. Easy peasy, right? Then they would have to identify the next number. Five. Let's make five dots. How about that? Easy peasy. Now, here's a little bit of a trick. I might not want to do three dots. Maybe what I want to do is use the dot marker to make the number three. So watch. How about that? So maybe they could have a little bit more fun with creating a three in that way. Why not? That's the thing about it. You got to keep it fun. You got to mix it up a little bit. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to wrap this up. And I hope that you really enjoyed this video on tips and strategies in order to get your kindergartner ready for the upcoming school year. So parents and families, I hope you have a great day. And until I see your kindergartner this coming fall, I'll be talking to you all again soon. Bye, everyone.